Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is the second part of a series on monetary policy. Monetary policy is one of two macroeconomic policies that we must study in the HSC course. It minimizes the fluctuations in economic activity by influencing the cost and availability of borrowable funds. Last lesson, we established the goals of the RBA when implementing monetary policy. We also broke down how the RBA implements a change in the cash rate. You can find a link to that video in the description below. Today we will explain how changes in interest rates will impact the economy. This process is called the transmission mechanism. During times of an inflationary boom, the RBA will implement a contractionary stance. An example of this was the second mining boom in the early 2010s. Let's talk about how this tightening monetary policy impacted the economy. When the cash rate is increased, banks will pass this on in a form of higher interest rates. Higher interest rates means that repayments on existing variable loans, such as mortgages, become more expensive. This leaves less disposable income for households, leading to lower household consumption. Another reason for lower consumption is that higher interest rates mean that the reward for saving is higher, so households prefer to consume less and save instead. Higher interest rates also mean that the cost of borrowing is increased, so businesses are less likely to borrow to invest and expand. Furthermore, there will be less investment into assets such as property and shares, leading to lower asset prices. This will mean lower household wealth and lead to lower consumption due to the wealth effect. Interest rates also impact the international sector. If Australian interest rates are higher than those of other countries, foreign investors will shift their funds into Australia for the higher return. This then causes the Australian dollar to appreciate and Australian manufacturers to lose international competitiveness, leading to lower export volumes and increased inputs. These symbols might look familiar. If you're in year 11, you recognize these as injections and leakages in the circular flow of income. Tightening monetary policy leads to less injections and more leakages, leading to a contraction in the economy. If you're doing the HSC, it's best to refer to these as the components of aggregate demand. With reductions in consumption, investment and net exports, aggregate demand will fall as a result of tightening monetary policy. This helps to reduce demand pool inflation, which is one of the objectives of the RBA. So that's how tightening monetary policy is used to achieve the objective of low inflation. What about if the RBA was trying to stimulate economic activity? Maybe we haven't reached full employment, or maybe the inflation rate is too low. How does loosening monetary policy work? Obviously, loosening monetary policy is just the opposite of the above process. Decreased cash rates and interest rates means that variable rate loan repayments are now less costly, so households have more disposable income, leading to greater consumption. There is also a lesser reward for saving, so households will consume instead. The cost of borrowing is lower, so households and businesses are willing and able to borrow to fund investment. If the increase in investments cause higher asset prices, the wealth effect will mean to increase consumption as well. Lower interests also mean that the reward for foreign investors is lower, so they'll reduce and withdraw their investments in Australia. This means that the Australian dollar will depreciate, leading to improved international competitiveness. This then leads to increased exports and decreased import volumes. With these changes, there are more injections and less leakages, causing an expansion in the circle flow of income. Also, increasing consumption, investment and net exports mean greater aggregate demand. This leads to increased economic activity. Subsequently, there will be greater demand for labour, so cyclical unemployment will fall, getting the economy closer to full employment. With these explanations, I hope I've made it easier for you to see why the cash rate generally moves with economic growth. As you can see, the cash rate increased when inflation was high during the mining booms, and when inflation slows down with lower economic growth and growing unemployment, the cash rate often decreases. It's not enough to simply say that the RBA changes interest rates in order to manage inflation. A student stands out by showing detailed understanding, and this is shown by thoroughly breaking down the processes of open market operations and the transmission mechanism. I hope that my explanations and examples have made it clearer and easier to understand these concepts so that you can go into detail. Next lesson, I'll be talking about the effectiveness and limitations of monetary policy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.